Hey everyone, I wanted to hop on because we just had um, a community Zoom and we didn't record it because we wanted it to be really focused on everyone that attended and let everybody feel comfortable enough to share. But I wanted to hop on because a lot of people were already upset that they missed it. So um, this was part two. You could find somewhere <laughs> in all of the stuff I go all, all over social media with. Um, these two little handouts that you could print out. And um, in part one, we explored half of it. And now I'm just going to briefly go through and explore the other half, and I invite you to follow right along. Um, print it out, follow along, and brainstorm because you're going to create your own personalized plan for staying healthy all winter long. It's gonna look completely different for you. Um, I'll give some ideas. I'll talk about some, um, some things that I do or might recommend that might spark something. Take what you like, leave the rest, and, um, and let's get started. So I'd like to revisit the, um, the limiting beliefs part right here. Um, is there, are there any beliefs that you have that are limiting your ability to stay healthy? Even if you did this in part one, revisit it or, you know, revisit the new belief you created. So some people's beliefs, um, some of the old beliefs that I used to have was, oh, I get a cold or two every winter. Well, if you believe that, it's going to happen. Um, recently, I had some interesting beliefs that I wasn't even aware of, like, oh, it's so hard to lose weight after the age of 40 or, oh, I don't have time for that. Hmm. Um, I had some limiting beliefs around an injury that I had. No. We can change our beliefs and all change. That's why before we talk about any of this, we want to change up here because we're not going to take action on things that we, that we don't believe. So you might change your um, belief to, I changed mine to, I'm a priority because I was working with the time one. I'm worth it and I'm radiant and energized. And we had a lot of people share in the comments their old and new beliefs and it was so powerful. So go ahead and take care of, of that before you even move forward because it's that belief that's gonna make you take action on these things. Okay, so there's so many different um, lifestyle areas that contribute to having a healthy immune system. And 95% um, of our health is our lifestyle. So last time in part one, we talked about self-care and stress management. So feel free to, um, to go back to that video for that one. We also talked about, um, we also talked about nutrition and antioxidants, as well as proactive immune support and respiratory support oils and products. Today, we're going to start with exercise and movement. So in the center, it says, how do you change your state? And changing your state is changing your mental, emotional, how you're feeling. In the Tony Robbins world, he talks about our state being, um, being a factor in our physiology, our breathing, and our focus. He calls it the triad. So if you're doing some kind of movement with a focus and breathing, you can easily move out of a negative state into a new positive state. So for some people, it might be putting on music and dancing for um, three minutes. Um, there's a whole priming exercise if you YouTube Tony Robbins prime, priming. If you're doing things like this that are very kundalini yoga breathing-ish, and then you're focusing on some gratitude, and it's an exercise that on the video takes about 15 minutes, but you could easily make it part of your morning routine in three to five minutes um, every morning. And doing something like that consistently, we'll talk about later, is so powerful for proactive um, proactive mindset. Um, what do we call it? And mental health tools on <laughs> page two. But we talked a little bit about how our focus goes, where energy flows. So. There's so much that we can do as far as self-care, as far as exercise. Um, so I want you to list exercises that you enjoy. It's really not worth going to the gym and doing something for 45 minutes while you're miserable. What do you enjoy doing? Um, be creative. And then also know that you're worth prioritizing around to make sure that you're taking care of yourself. I, I admitted <laughs> to the group that I could have a conference call scheduled with somebody I don't even know, a complete stranger, and I will organize my whole day around it, making them a priority. And I realized I wasn't doing it for me. 
I wasn't making myself a priority. So now I put my exercising, whether going for a walk or a bike or, you know, a kayak, whatever I'm doing twice a day in my calendar. And I schedule my day around that because I'm worth it. And, um, I, in my limiting beliefs, I also had the epiphany, um, that discipline and consistency was like control and uh, nobody wants it. Um, but I, I reframed the definition to discipline means I'm worth it. Um, and, and now I love it. So, um, you know, some exercises, you don't really need me for this <laughs> biking, yoga, walking, whatever you enjoy. Um, friends of mine, and I recently got one of those Oculus virtual reality things. So like sometimes we'll, um, we will do it together where we're playing these games and you can work out the sweat. So there's so many ways that you could, that you could move, but also as far as not having the time, if that's an issue for you, we explored in the self care and stress management net time, no extra time, how you can do some of these things like listen to audiobooks while you're driving somewhere. If you have a commute or waiting for your kids and picking up school. So very often if I have a meeting that I'm not um, facilitating, I'll put in my earbuds and I'll listen to it while I'm walking around the neighborhood or, um, so yeah, so you could, you could see how, <laughs> and on, um, and on our call, one of our friends was on the treadmill. <laughs> she had her camera off and later said, that's what I'm doing right now. So net time, no extra time. How can you do some of these things? You know, you might have, you might be waiting for your child for 30 minutes at soccer while you're walking around the big field, like whatever it is. Um, so just different ideas. But once you have an idea of exercise and movement, then the next part is making time and putting it in your calendar to do that, making yourself a priority. Because if we're focusing on and taking care of ourselves physically, we're going to have a much better mental outcome and like state. Um, Cause the fastest way to change our state is through physiology consistency. And one other thing I wanted to share as you create these new beliefs is that you might want to use incantations. Tony Robbins talks about, you know, walking and, and saying affirmations or incantations like my life is great. I am a hundred and whatever pounds, like whatever it is. And lately I've been walking or even biking, holding onto the handlebars going, I am worth it. Like <laughs> whatever you're working on, make that part of, of your daily routine, really start to walk into that new belief. Um, and this actually comes from Kundalini yoga. There's a Sata Nama meditation and they've done research, not using the mantra, but just using this with the breath for Alzheimer's patients. And it is proven how it creates synapses in your brain. So you might want to, um, add that to whatever exercises you're doing. Okay. So ways to get a good night's sleep. This is something I'm really passionate about sleep hygiene. And if you are part of my Facebook group, um, live your radiant life. Um, I talk about bookends on there and there's some videos that you could access, um, that talks about ideas for bookends, um, for morning and night and having that kind of consistency that is so important to, um, our proactive mindset, um, self care and mental health. Um, no matter where your prior, like your goals lie, as far as what you're creating in your life, having a good night's sleep, feeling well rested will definitely help those things happen. So it may not have been in focus in the past, but you, you might want to explore it because I know that there's been so much unrest with the uncertainty of the world right now. And, um, when there's that kind of stress going on, things like our sleep are definitely affected. So ways that you unwind and transition, and this is different for everyone. Um, sometimes I transition the lights. So I'm not using these big harsh lights and I have these little battery operated candles that I got. Um, and just unplugging, I'm starting to unplug an hour or two before I want to go to sleep. Stopping with the screen time is huge. Not watching things that are negative like the news or something that might be, um, scary or something. Uh, <laughs> I will admit that when COVID started, I was legit watching episodes of, um, the old gummy bears. 
<laughs> to help me kind of calm down at night like it was a bedtime story. Just one 20 minute episode and it made me feel so good. Oh my goodness, why am I sharing this? But but things that are nourishing, that are calming. Um, <laughs> the bookend rituals. A lot of people like to meditate or take a bath. Whatever is going to help you transition. <laughs> Um, I could create um, an environment for a good night's sleep. So for me, I can write down what, what works for you. For me, um, putting on the diffuser with the lights, with whatever oil or oils I'm called to, that lets me know it's, it's, time, it's time to rest. It's time to transition. I personally use um, CBD oil sometimes. Um, we have this CBD oil from Young Living, and very often I'm using the little Calm Roll-On. Um, that's been really nice for me. Um, hmm. <laughs> and sometimes relaxations, breathing. So I used to do a gratitude journal regularly and I loved it, but something consistently like having a sleep regimen, um, you know, sleep hygiene that works for you. Even if it's just one or two things that take three or five minutes could be really powerful. Um, other sleep support. Other than some of my favorite oils like Peace and Calming or Stress Away, if my mind's really going, like, sometimes oils are not going to cut it. I just, um, and meditation is almost, like, it's really hard to meditate when your mind is like that. It just makes me more anxious sometimes. It's rare, but there was a time in my life where I took this almost every night, but now I just keep it on hand for when I need it. It's, it's called um, Sleep Essence, and... Um, it has some melatonin in it with lavender, vetiver, valerian, tangerine. It's a little capsule, and they say to take one or two, an hour, 30 minutes or an hour before you want to go to sleep, and it has never, ever failed me. So I keep it on hand for, for emergencies, <laughs> for when my mind's really, really going. Um, and make sure if you're going to order any of these oils, make sure you order directly from the company. Never order from Amazon or eBay. Very often what you get, especially with the oils, are something that's been um, tampered with or diluted or something completely different. Even the Thieves Cleaner, it's, um, it's, I've seen it happen to first-hand friends who didn't want to pay shipping. No, get it directly from the company. Then you know what you're getting is the real thing and safe. So, um, and if you're not already um, a member, I'm happy to refer you and, and help you through the whole process and um, make sure you're getting the best deal, all those things. I'm a good shopper. <laughs> so um, sleep support for mind and body. Um, those supplements, the CBD, blue light. So blue light filters on your screens um, sometimes they're already um, they're already part of your phone. You just turn on the blue light filter. Some people um, download apps. When COVID hit, I was on the um, I was on the phone and looking at screens so much more because everything was over Zoom, and I was getting headaches. And I switched out my glasses um, to ones that had blue blocking filters, and it was definitely a game changer. Um, and I also started taking more regularly Illuminize, which is um, helping with all of that as well. I'm happy to send you information if you want. It's fascinating, but it definitely does something as far as the blue light. There's been a lot of people that have seen um, you know, results of a lot of support for their, their eye health through that. Um, journaling, gratitude, Joe Dispenza. <laughs> <laughs> I've been listening to a lot of Joe Dispenza meditations before bed and really digging it. Um, I think Hay House right now actually has something free by him that you might want to check out. But his meditations are really nice. And, you know, what you focus on, especially before you go to bed, you kind of bring into um, your your consciousness and your subconsciousness and even just doing a relaxation before bed. Sometimes we like go to sleep all tense and we wake up just as, as tense. Just because we sleep doesn't mean we actually relax. So doing breathing and relaxing, something guided. A lot of people listen to different apps. Um, I'll post on here an invitation to take a peek at something I'm creating for creating goals for 2021. And um, it'll give you access to the member area of my website that's full of yoga, relaxations, meditations, breathing exercises, all kinds of self-care stuff that you, that if you're looking for things like that to do before bed, it might be really nice just to do a 10-minute full-body guided relaxation. 
or some breathing exercise. And if you sign up for that um, week long, you know, creating your goal set of emails in one of those emails, it will also go over um, bookends, things that you could do in the morning and the evening, you know, like creating your own bookends. And one of it goes over different breathing exercises and, um, <laughs> and it's really nice. So you could also access that through my Facebook page, um, Live Your Radiant Life. Okay. So we've gone over self-care, stress management, exercise movement, your path to creating a good night's sleep. Let's get into hydration, tips and tricks. Hydration is a huge part of keeping your immune system strong. And first and foremost, my tip is to have water with you all the time. Um, because if it's not with you and you're waiting until you're already thirsty, until you take a drink, you're probably already dehydrated. You also might want to track how much water you drink. I know if I drink two of these, then then I'm good. Um, a lot of a lot of times, they whoever they are recommending having half of your um, body weight in ounces. That's interesting for a lot of people that don't drink much water. But if I'm not drinking enough water, I have this little Itovi scanner, and I scan. I scan for mineral essence almost every time. Um, Mineral essence is um, a full spectrum like mineral complex. You keep it in your refrigerator after you open it. But um, sometimes I, I mix this with water and a little amino wise, which is really our exercise like post workout um, replenish mints. Um, you put a scoop recovery, you just put a scoop of it in water. Sometimes I do this with this, maybe even with a little bit of the Ninja Red and the rest water in a 20 ounce little bottle. And I feel amazing. And I don't drink anymore, but if you ever do drink and you feel like you're, you're waking up and your liver needs some extra support, <laughs> that's a really great combination. Um, so I just thought I would mention that. And a lot of people don't really love the taste of water. So if you're drinking out of a glass water bottle, you could use some of our sleek oil or grapefruit oil. We have these vitality drops that have stevia in them, you know, but get your water and, um, and also you might want to decrease your caffeine or alcohol. So I still do coffee, but I try to, as I just did before our call, I try to limit it. And so some days I use our Ninja Nitro. It has natural ginseng in me in it. It doesn't give me the jitters. It doesn't like keep me awake at night. Um, I mean, I don't usually do it late at night, but, but it's, it's not going to, um, have a lot of the negative effects that coffee does, but yet it'll give you the caffeine and often I'll do it before a workout to help, um, to help with that. A lot of, that's what it was kind of made for as a pre-workout, um, as a pre-workout addition, but I also love using it before if I need to work for a long time and stay focused. It's pretty incredible. So the Ninja Nitro is a great alternative if you're trying to limit your coffee. Um, so yeah, hydration tips and tricks. Da -da -da. Okay, what's next? Let's go down to ways to reduce toxins because that definitely has an effect on your immune system. If we have a harsh load of, that our liver has to deal with, kind of clogs up the whole system. And when we're looking at things that we use on a daily basis to start, if you've never like really started to switch to safer things in your household and you're looking to ditch and switch things, a great place to start are things that you use every day, like toothpaste. So if your toothpaste has on the back of it that if you ingest more than a tablespoon to call poison control, you may want to switch. Um, <laughs> Even though we're spitting out the toothpaste, we absorb sublingually even more quickly than we absorb the things that we put on our skin. So I use the Young Living toothpaste. If you're traveling, you forget your deodorant, it could double as deodorant. <laughs> but um, you want to make sure you're not having toothpaste that's full of, who knows what it's full of, but there's usually a lot of artificial flavors, colors, and um, things that would make you want to go to poison control if you had more than a tablespoon of it. So, um, and it's kind of the... It may not be a problem once in a while, but if we're doing things like that on a daily basis, there's bioaccumulation that happens that really taxes the system. So, um, you know, if you wear makeup every day, you might want to start with your makeup. Um, whatever deodorant you're using, like if it has aluminum especially in it, you might want to ditch and switch that. I, um, I love the 
the Young Living deodorants very much. My only tip for using them is make sure that you put them on after you bathe. So like if you take a bath or a shower at night, put it on at night. Don't wait until the morning because then there's already bacteria there. So that is one big thing that I've found has helped people when they switch to a more natural deodorants and then we're all using hand sanitizer a lot more these days and there's a huge list going around mainstream media of hand sanitizers that you don't want to use that they're even allowing certain chemicals that are usually you know supposed to be restricted in hand sanitizers because there were um there were shortages so i use the young living one the alcohol actually comes from it's not petroleum based it actually comes from peppermint oil and there's aloe in it and it doesn't make my hands all dry and other hand sanitizer would just would make like all this red stuff happen in here so um you know we don't want to do more harm than good whatever we put on our skin gets absorbed so Think of things that you're using every day like lotions and stuff and you might want to switch to safer and if you're looking for ideas about that contact me. I have little classes on demand that might give you some good ideas, DIYs and things like that. And in the household, like what cleaner do you use? Especially if you, if you walk barefoot or you have kids or animals that are licking the floor <laughs> or the windows, like you might want to switch to a plant-based cleaner or a thieves cleaner. If you accidentally ingest it or a pet or a child accidentally ingests it, it doesn't need a mystery X sticker. You don't have to go to poison control. They just say, drink a lot of water. And it cleans fantastic. So, um, you know, you want to think about that. Like even in like your kitchen, if you're cleaning with harsh chemicals and your food goes, you know, on the cutting board that you're cleaning with or on the countertop, and then you're eating the residue of that, you don't want that. So plant-based cleaners are great. Um, some of the most toxic things in our homes are laundry, air fresheners, whatever kind of fragrances there might be and like candles and waxes. Cause we're not talking about these pure essential oils. We're talking about, you know, chemical fragrances. I personally get a headache when I'm around them. And even if you don't have a reaction, your body is still being affected by it. Um, so things that are scented. So, you know, I use the Young Living laundry detergent. I use it, you know, I switched over to diffuser instead of candles years ago. Yeah, email me if you want help stitching and switching. It's one of my favorite things to do because it's something that, you know, we have control over what we bring into our home and it definitely affects the health of everyone in it, especially our, our pets and kids and yeah, everyone that visits, even though we're in COVID. I guess we're just spending so much more time in our homes nowadays, it might even be more important. So yeah, I'd reach out. I'd love to chat with you about it or send you some information. Uh, the last time we talked about proactive immune support and respiratory support, oils and supplements, and as well as nutritional antioxidant and antioxidants, foods and gut health. The last thing we're going to talk about is being proactive on page two about your mindset and mental health tools. And let me just say the conversation that we had in the Zoom could in no way um, touch what I'm going to share right now. It was so wonderful getting everyone's input about what they're doing for their mental health, especially now when it's so important. Um, our friend Patty was talking about, oh, maybe she'll post here. Um, she created a book for educators and even people that are educators that aren't professionally trained because <laughs> there's a lot of people homeschooling their kids right now. Um, so I'll ask her to post on here about the tools to thrive in the five C's, um, you know, connection, consistency. Now, I don't know if consistency was part of the, the five tools to thrive, but at the end she wrote consistency is needed for all of these. So you know, whether you're doing a gratitude journal or 100 days of this or, you know, whatever days of this, doing it consistently is really important. We talked about boundaries. We talked about boundaries with people, with TV, news, whatever you're putting in your mind, whatever you're putting in your bound in your body. Boundaries. I might do a podcast on boundaries with my friend that I'm visiting. Um, making sure you're saying what you mean, meaning what you, you say. We teach people how to treat us. We really kind of went off on a tangent. It was beautiful, but boundaries are really important in our lives. So we talked about priming again. That might be a really nice thing to do on a daily basis to set your day. Um, again, consistently in three minutes, having something to do. You have, you have three minutes. Um, you know, a lot of times people talk, 
about the power hour. Tony Robbins talks about that or 30 to thrive or 15 to something. And he's like, and if you don't have 15 minutes for yourself, then you don't have a life. And I'm like, whoa. So even if it's just five minutes or three minutes, there's exercises that when you're moving your, your body and your breath and you have your focus going, that's all you need. Three minutes. Um, and I think I mentioned earlier the, um, the priming on YouTube with Tony Robbins is, is a great, is a great option when we're talking about creating your state. And even though it's 15 minutes on there, you could easily do it in three minutes on your own in the morning. <sighs> Breathing, different yoga practices, maybe, um, some of the things that I, um, that I have in the self care, fill your cup vault on my member area and liveyourradiantlife.com might be helpful to you. But these are all things I'm really passionate about exploring and sharing all that self-care and mindset tools. So I'll share more on here. I'm happy to have a conversation around it. I love sharing resources, but that was a quick overview of part two of staying healthy all winter long. And I just want to remind everybody that our lifestyle choices, the things we do on a daily basis, um, you know, have control over 95% of our health. So that gives us the power in our hands. It was really nice doing this. <laughs> I look forward to connecting soon. I hope you're all well. Take care. I don't really know how to do this. It's the first Facebook or Instagram live I did. I guess I'll just press this X. Bye. <laughs> End video.